0.2 to 2 periods ago and 0.1 or 1, 5, 2, last period, okay? The reason why I chose that kind of weighting scheme is to try to account for some seasonality. So what do I mean by seasonality? Like okay. you said that your dad is a preacher, mm -hmm. so like around Christmas time and Easter, there's peaks, peaks. and then there's and um, valleys. And valleys at other times. And it's even more than that, it's peaks and valleys that are consistent year to year. Right? That's what we mean by it. So every fall is going to have a peak in NFL jersey sales. Right? And that happens every year because why? Well, fall is when football season is, right? There. So we're trying to account for some seasonality. We're also going to try and account for some trends down the road. So trends are just overarching upward or downward trends. And we're trying to minimize noise. What do I mean by noise? We know seasonality. We know trends. What do I mean by noise? Noise is the things that's going on around, it, it's distraction? It's distraction, it's um, noise is things we can't explain, just randomness of the data. So we're trying to pick the forecast that minimizes this randomness. We want to try and account for everything the best that we can. All right. So any questions about these? I do have another data set there we can use practice if we would like to, but I do want to uh, get out the new material um, just so that we all see it, then we can take a breath and then look at things again. All right. So, how are we doing? Do you guys want me to do anything here with the... Uh... Yeah, go ahead. 9.7625 at the bottom. Yes. Uh, how did you get that? Ah, very good question. Not the average test. So that is, this is the average, this is the total result for our math. And the way that we got this, right? So we have three different techniques, right? We did a three, so um, you can group them like this. I, I'll make it. Let's be colorful here, right? So these two are together, right? This is the simple moving average using three periods and the math associated with it, right? This part here, um, let's pick another color, go here. So these two columns, these are the forecast using a simple moving average, but four periods and the associated math. Right? This is the, the absolute deviation for that one observation, and then this is the average of all of those. Okay? And then these last two columns, I think I see this. Yeah, so these are the forecast using a weighted average where I gave you the weight and the associated mats with that technique. So I don't know how colorful you like your spreadsheets, but that's one way, these two are together, break. These two are together, break. These two are together. Okay. Does that, does that answer you guys? Yeah, I, I see what I did wrong. I, I, it was just the average of one, but what I did was I forgot the absolute value then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then you're going to have negatives negative and positive. And then when you average negative 10 and positive 10, you get zero deviation. But in fact, it should be, your average is 10 wrong every time, just one high and one low. Yep. Now, this is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. I gave these equations, but I'm going to put them up here on the board. So when we start to do exponential, exponential smoothing. So this is new stuff that we didn't get to on Tuesday. Okay. Basically, what we're doing here is we are self-correcting for previous mistakes that we made. All right. So simple moving and weighted moving averages, it just kind of goes along the same system here and there. Well, exponential smoothing allows us to introduce a variable, uh, just like a coefficient, that how much do we self-correct for previous mistakes? Now, you could be a stubborn person, just a way to, to be stubborn. I, if I am very stubborn and I did something wrong, am I likely to change in the future if I'm stubborn? No. No. Right? So that's one extreme. I'm super stubborn. I don't care if my forecast was wrong. I'm not changing it. Right? Now, somebody else who on the opposite extreme might be completely fluid. And, oh, I made one little mistake. I'm completely changing my forecast technique. I'm changing everything. I'm very fluid. Right? So we have these two extremes about how much do we react to previous mistakes. Right? Does, that, does that kind of make sense? That's where we're allowed to do an exponential smoothing. Okay. So 
So I'll put the formula in here and explain it. So our forecast for some period t okay, is going to be equal to the forecast of the previous period. So this is subscript. The forecast today is equal to my forecast before. Okay? Plus alpha. All right. So alpha, we're not quite done yet here. So what alpha is going to stand for is how much do previous mistakes make us change our forecast. Right? Alpha is going to be a measure how responsive are we to previous mistakes? Right? Think about the stubborn, or what's the opposite of stubborn? I don't even know what the opposite of stubborn is. In compliance. What? In compliance with whatever is going on. You, you're in compliance with what they're telling you to do. All right. Well, do it. I like it. Scale of responsiveness, and it goes from zero to one. So the closer you are to zero, the smaller the alpha is, the less responsive you are. So write that down. The closer alpha is to zero, the less responsive you are to previous forecasting errors. The closer you are to one, well, the more responsive you are. So the closer? Alpha is zero, less responsive? Yes. Closer, the smaller it, the smaller the better. You'll see this here. Let me, I'll finish this. Yeah. So the lower the alpha, lower the alpha, the less responsive. So the lower the alpha, the more stubborn we are. Right? To use my other language. Lower alpha, more stubborn. Now let's, I finished the equation up here, and again, you don't have to memorize it, but it's, help, it's helpful to visualize it. It's alpha, this parameter between zero and one, times what actually happened last period, and the forecast we had last period. So what is this? What is the gap between, between what actually happened and what we forecasted? This is the mistake, right? This is a, our forecasting, Error last period. Right? The difference between what actually happened and what you predicted. We're measuring how bad it is. Yes, yes. And if alpha is zero, we're the most stubborn, guess what happens? This is all zero, right? Because zero times that, that means we don't care if we were wrong. We don't care how wrong we were. If alpha is zero, we are so stubborn, we're not even going to change our forecast. Right? Now, if alpha is 1, now let's go to the other extreme that we keep changing everything. If alpha is 1, we don't need to think about it, right? Because it's just anything times 1 is that number. What cancels out? F minus F, and what are you left with? Just A. So that means you change your forecast for today to simply what it was yesterday. What I predicted yesterday at PM. I'm just changing my forecast for today to what happened yesterday. No sense of consistency, nothing, right? So that zero and one are the way far extremes, okay? Now, most common question I get, well, what's alpha, right? Alpha is going to be given to you. Now, there are ways that if you had a lot of data and you had some more sophisticated software that you can optimize what is the actual optimal alpha, right? But we, we're not going to be worried about that. You're going to be saying, what is the alpha of 0.6 and or using alpha of 0.35 or whatever the case might be. Before I put it in Excel, let me just highlight one thing. We tend to see, remember, lower the mad, the better. This is just a simple graph of the mad on the vertical, and the alpha. So we have alpha of zero ranging to one. If we have zero, our mad is pretty high. We're too stubborn for our own good. If we have alpha close to one, it's not very good. We are just too willy-nilly, just free to the wind, changing every period. 
So the optimal mag is somewhere in here. It's not necessarily 0.5, right? All data have a different optimal mag, but the optimal mag would be when the mag's the lowest, right? This alpha, which is associated with the lowest mag. But it's a good way to help visualize. We don't want to be too stubborn, and we don't want to be too willy-nilly, right? We want to be some moderate value. All right, thanks. So let's do alpha of Let's let alpha be equal to 0 0.6. Why? Doesn't matter. The equation, you just change, put in whatever alpha you want. Okay? So let's translate this into our Excel. I'm going to do something right here. You guys don't have to because you guys can see more of the Excel than I can looking at here. So I'm going to go to view my three All I did was freeze the plane so I can move things over and you can, so I can still see it. So now we want to do exponential smoothing with alpha, I'm going to put A but it's alpha, equals 0 0.6. And again, these are my original sales. This is my actual data. Now, I can't have a forecast for the first period because I don't have previous periods. But unlike the other moving averages, I can start with my exponential smoothing right away with my second period. Because all I need is the previous information to do it. All right. Now, watch how I translate this equation into Excel. Okay. I'm starting out that second period equals, okay, equals, what? How do I get started here? I'm going to have to start with what actually happened. Right? This is only going to be for the first one. I need some sort of a starting point. Right? Oh, let's, let's do it like this. We can actually do a little bit better. Let's just take. I forget that I, I did. Let's start with this first one and equal just like it happened. So let's start with exponential smoothing that our first one was, because we need some sort of starting forecast. This is our forecast for exponential smoothing starting with 97, okay? So for this second one, now we're actually getting a real forecast. So I'm going to be doing equals, okay? What was my previous forecast? 97. 97, the one right above it. Remember, this is our forecast. Equals right above it, plus, Alpha, 0 0.6 times, in parentheses, okay, what actually happened last period minus what I predicted to happen last period. Okay. I know what the answer is going to be. The answer is going to be 97 again. It always will be. Because by default, I made it that my first one was right. But I, had, I need somewhere to start. So reading right above the break in the board, K2, that's my previous forecast, plus 0.6, I gave you that alpha, times in parentheses, the actual will happen, the D2 from the actual data, minus what I previously predicted. This should be 97. Okay. It's 97 by definition. So you said D2. What's up? All right, equal. No, no, no. Not equal, okay, not, no, not D2. Okay, this is your exponential forecast. All right, so delete D2. Delete it so it should be the forecast before, so the one right above it. It should be E2. Okay, so E2. Yep, yep. So E2 plus points 6 instead of point zero 0.06. Alpha is point 0.6, 0 0.6. So then, and then times. D2, the previous actual. So because you're in the bot, you're in the second period there, the actual from the first period. Okay, so there is. Minus the one right above it again. Minus E2, correct. So that's correct. So okay. this is actually predicting it. So are we like looking at how far off the actual sales are versus the predicted ones? Of the previous period, yeah. This is what actually this is what we predicted last period, and that's what actually happened last period. Okay. So and another way to think about it, so when you started it, for the forecast for period T equals above, right, the forecast before, 
plus the alpha 0.6 times in parentheses what actually happened before minus what we predicted before, how wrong we were. Now, if we now we can drag this box down for all of our data. Okay. And in fact, we can drag it, what? One more to get that value that we want. Now, on your homework, it's going to be, what is your predicted value for the 13th period? We have 12. What is your predicted value for the 13th? And you guys should get 141.941. You guys get what I have? You're still going to give us time at the end of looking at our quizzes? I hope to, but right. we have to get the material. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Click on 97, that, that one there. So that is G2 plus 0.6, not 0.06. No. It's 0 0.6 I have. And then G2 minus G2, so drag it down. And you can actually drag it down one more to get to 13. So that's your new period. Yep, perfect, perfect, perfect. This is the what? That that is your that 141.94. Uh -huh. That is the projected 13th period. Now we don't know what actually is going to happen, but this will be projected to happen. Right. Now for our mean absolute deviation, we take equals the same thing we did before. How do we do it? Equals a b s, and then what actually happened? And start with the second one minus what we projected to happen. You got 45. So this is going to be equal to ABS in parentheses, what actually happened, which is 142, minus what we projected to happen, which was 97, and we should get 45. What is 45 saying? That is the that is the how much we were wrong in that particular period. So the mat is the mean. So that's the mean of everything. But this is how wrong we were in that one particular period. Right? We can copy this down. Right. So you can see we vary on how wrong we were. Our forecast in quarter two, 2012, was wrong by over 41 sales. But our in this period, 2013 period three, we were only off by 2.1 sales. We were pretty darn close. Yeah. So what did we do? Which one would we take? because we don't have anything that actually happened. Right? We can only we can only calculate our math based on ones that we have both a forecast and an actual. Oh, okay. So okay. this is our forecast, but we don't know how wrong it is because we don't know what actually happened. Yeah. But now once we have all of this, then we take the average of that to get our official math. So if I take the average, so again, we know how to do that, equals average of all of these. We get a mean absolute deviation of 19. 19.02. Now, do, how well did we do with this term, with this kind of a, with this kind of a um, forecast? Not very good. Worst. Not very good compared to the other ones, right? It's the worst one, right? So that mad was 19, this one was 9, this one was 11.1, .1. this one was 15.9, so by far this is the worst one, which is fine. There are going to be some cases where exponential smoothing is the best one, and there are going to be some times when it is the absolute worst one. 
So okay. potentially, if we change the alpha, it could be different. Potentially, okay, uh, that's a good point. You guys can do this or not. Uh, let's say not. Let me do it real quick. So I gave you the mat of 0.6, and you guys have that in front of you, the actual result, right? Everyone has this? Okay. Now I'm going to quickly take this, and I'm going to put this into, say, point, 0.35. Okay. So I just changed my alpha. I changed my predicted formula here. What happened to my MAD when I'm going from an alpha 0.6 to an alpha 0.35? My MAD went down. So using an alpha 0.35 is better than using an alpha 0.6 with this particular data set. Right? So basically what this is telling me is I should have been more stubborn. Right? I shouldn't have been so, you know, I needed a lower alpha to be better. Now, if I change this to a, let's be super stubborn, and let's move my alpha to being 0.1. Really, really stubborn. Really, really stubborn, 0.1, is mat of 25. So if, what we see here, looking at this graph, when I had a mat alpha of 0.6, my mat was, what was it, 16 something? Or no, 19 something. So this is 19 something. If I had a MAD of 0.35, my uh, alpha 0.35, what was my MAD? 16 something. If I had a MAD of 0.1, sorry, an alpha 0.1, my MAD was 25. Oh, that kind of fits what I had drawn there. Right? More or less, you know. But you kind of see. You don't want too low or too high. So in this case, 0.35. All right? So the middle necessarily will always be 0.5. No, no. Um, so remember that best one I had 16? I'll just try and illustrate this real quick. I'm going to just put do one more example here. You can see how easy it is to just kind of switch one number. And with Excel, everything else auto fills. So I just put 0.5, like right in the middle. And my math is 17.7. So it's better to have 0.35 than it was at 0.5. So it's not, not always at 0.5. All right, pretty good. So now we can incorporate one other type of exponential smoothing. We're down to two more. One more type of exponential smoothing and regression. And then we're, we're good for all the new material. You guys should be sad. So in the end, you're going to kind of do a little recap of this? Or no, this is it? I, I don't have much. Okay. I will all right. be here until the. All right. All right. If you guys want to review this, we can do another example of all this. If you'd rather review chapter 14, we can do chapter 14. If you'd rather review chapter 3, we can review chapter 3. Yeah. Chapter 10, we can do chapter 10. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we can do whatever you want after I get through these last two forecasting techniques. All right, so now we're going to do exponential smoothing, so this forecasting, but now we're going to add an overriding trend, okay? So we can account for not only an overriding upward or downward trend in sales, but then also adjust our forecast around that, including the trend, okay? So it's pretty helpful to include this trend. So a couple equations, you don't have to memorize them, they're already in that handout, but it's helpful to see when we put it in Excel. Right. Our main forecast is going to be FIT, forecast including trend. All right. So forecast including trend is going to be made up of two parts. It's going to be equal to the forecast in that period plus the trend in that period. All right, so the forecast including trend, two parts. Forecast and trend. We have to calculate them both. All right. The 
the forecasting part, so this F right here, is calculated by a similar manner to what we just did over here. So this F part is equal to the previous fit, sorry, this should be F T minus one. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, sorry about that. So the forecast for this period is equal to the previous fit plus alpha, the same that we have here, right, same interpretation of what actually happened previous period, same as what we had here, minus what our true forecast including trend was last period. So you can see it's the exact same, except this has the IT and the IT, right? But the interpretation is generally the same. Right. Now is the T part. Right. One of our last equations of the semester. Thursday, so I'll, I'll start it all over again. Wow. I won't. Never forget my class. Right. We're introducing a new, we have alpha and we have beta. So what beta is representing in this equation? So it is beta, which is between 0 and 1. It is, the beta is times F, I did this on purpose, F, T minus FT minus 1 plus 1 minus beta times the previous trend. Right. So what this is saying is how we're smoothing our trend. Wait, I'm sorry, is that plus the last trend? Or? Yes, yeah, beta FT minus FT minus 1 in parentheses plus 1 minus beta times the okay. previous trend. Right. So beta is between 0 and 1, once again, right. and the higher the beta is, okay. higher beta, so the higher the beta, the higher the beta, the more our trend is affected by recent trends. Basically what it's saying is higher the beta, the more willing we are to change our trend line. Okay? The lower the beta, the more, I would say, the more stubborn our trend is. Right? So if we have a data that kind of might looks something like this. So what is the overall trend? If we have very high beta, we change our trend often, right, based on previous data. If we have a very low beta, we don't change our trend. That means our trend might just be more straight and then maybe like that. So the lower the beta, the less we change our trend. The higher the beta, the more we do change our trend. That's the interpretation between 0 and 1. Again with beta, I'll give that to you. I will tell you assume beta is this. It'll be between 0 and 1, but understand a little bit about what it is that it's telling us. Higher the beta, the more often we change our trend based on recent events. The lower the beta, the more we just keep our trend, keep it on. We don't change our trend. Right? Higher beta, put more weight on recent events. The lower the beta, we put more weight on just this overarching trend through the data. Right. So I give that to you. Yeah. you Make sense a little bit? So we have two parameters, alpha and beta, that I give to you, but just know the basics of what they mean.
So in order to put this all together, we're going to have, we need three columns. We are going to need our forecast, we're going to be needing our trends, and we're going to be needing our forecast including trends. Now we need to get started somewhere. All right. I'm going to start off the same way that we started off before. I'm going to keep my first forecast to be exactly what the actual data was. The only reason is because I need some place to start. So I'm going to simply put in for this F, my first F, I'm just going to put in 97. Right? I'm just going to pretend we're starting right at the point. We're starting right on, and then we're going to let the forecast go. Okay. My trend, it is the first period. My trend is always going to start off as zero. zero. What? Zero. zero. My forecast, including trend, is equal to what? F plus T. All right? 97. 97. Yeah. <laughs> Not a lot. Not a whole lot of interesting things going on, but even though you know it's 97, do not write 97 because we're eventually going to want to copy and paste some things down. So your F, whatever column that is, plus your T. So in my case, looking up here, M plus N. All right, very good. Now all we have to do is read the equations and do what it tells us to do looking at our subscripts and looking at the value. All right, so my forecast, F, now I'm focusing right here. First I need to give you, uh, what do I want the alpha equals 0.3 and beta equals 0.1. This will always 100% be given to you. So I'll, so I'll put A equals 0.3, and uh, I won't put it there. I'm going to put it over here because I'll need that for my mad. So A equals 0.3, comma B equals 0.1. Just know that A is alpha and B is beta. So 0.3 and 0.1. Now let's read this together. You don't have to say it out loud, but let's I want to read this and put it in there. And so you do the same here. Equals, so this is my F, that middle thing. Equals previous fit. Okay? Very important that you get the right ones. Equals previous fit plus point three. Where's point three? Alpha gave it to you. Times in parentheses, what actually happened last period, this is D2, right? I put it up there because it'll mess up. So D2 is what actually happened in the previous period. Minus my fit in the previous period. So it's the same thing O2 in my case. Previous fit plus 0.3 times what actually happened, 97 minus the fit, which is also going to be 97, because we have to start off somewhere. All right? When we press enter, she get 97. Just like how we did before. The first one, we don't really have much to go on here. Everyone got 97 too? Excellent. So let's do our T. Now we focus on this bottom guy. Now be very careful how we do this. Hey, can you go back to the 97? Sorry. Yeah, so it's uh -oh. zero, 02. No, it's not zero, 02. Oh. O2. 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 That's my previous fit right here. Yeah. Plus 0.3 times D2, my actual, minus O2, my previous fit. You got it now? Um, yes. That would be why you got it wrong. All right. So good. All right. So. Now let's, let's read carefully the T. 
And again, the equations are here, but you want to practice how to do this. T is equal to B beta, which is what? Point one. Point 0.1 times, in parentheses, my current forecast minus my previous forecast, not fit, forecast. Okay, so what is my current F? Current period F Seven. minus the F column, but the previous F, 97. Okay, end parentheses. So my current F minus my previous F plus, in parentheses, 1 minus B, which is 0 0.1. And parentheses. That's my one minus beta times in parentheses. They're not. I'm sorry. We actually don't even need parentheses there. All right. So one minus point one times my previous time, which is same column, but my previous, which is zero. zero. So that'd be times times the previous. And we keep getting zeros. That will change. Watch the beauty of this. What is my fit is equal to F plus T. You know you're right if the second row is the same as the first row. Right? That's a good sign. My current year fit minus my previous year fit, or my previous my current year f minus my previous f plus one minus point one times my previous trend. All right, now here's the you now here's the big thing if we got everything right. I highlighted all three of these, and I'm, I'm going to try to. Highlight these three values. And I'm going to drag it the whole way down. So I'm just copying and pasting it the whole way down. You guys can just drag it down. <laughs> All right, I'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Right. Do your ear numbers look like mine? Bottom, so you're one row off of what, what I have. Uh, no, oh, you're, you're one off. All right, so and I added a 13th row. No, but you should do a 13th row. So if we do the 13th row, and I'll come around and make sure. If we do the 13th row, because that's just looking at what we've had here. If I do, do this down to my 13th row, this right here is our va value of interest. This is my third, notice this is my 13th row, because I don't have any actual data. My forecast, including trend, is 148.367 for the period that hasn't happened yet. So again, I took it one down. And that what I highlight is the answer for your homework. All right. M16. Oh, yeah. Oh, because when you copy and paste it down, they copy and paste it down here. So, first of all, you have to anchor it down. Because we don't want that to change. Okay. And we have our so D2 minus O2. Yeah. Okay. Smart guy, man. You got it here. Needs to be. Smartest guy right here, man. <laughs> <laughs> he don't need his crap. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? 
He's gone. <laughs> I'm acting for another class and he's out of here. <laughs> Calculate what? The MAD, same way, start with the second one, equals ABS. This never changes. Actual minus the fit. 45, drag down, and hopefully this is becoming repetitive, equals average of that. So including trend would be 16.5. So the mag would be, the, which one, this one first? No, equals ABS. Remember, mag oh, is yeah, always equals ABS. ABS. Okay. And then in parentheses, actual, go way back to the actual. The D. Yep, the D. Two. D42, yep. Minus the fit. The fit, right? Yep. And that's it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. No, 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 no. This needs to be equals average. Why did you Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> equals average of all your max. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly That's correct. That's the end of it? No. Oh, okay. You guys good? Oh, right. But equals average. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Now you don't have any yeah. no, so you you don't have any bad in the first one, so that's zero. Okay. Because like you you created it zero. So put okay. zero here. Or delete, delete, just delete it. Yeah. Okay. So there should be nothing that yep equals. There you go. Start start with that. Yep. Yeah. You good? What? That's your actual bad. That's so the this mean. Is actually, you have to find these to find the Exactly actual. correct. Exactly okay. correct. Those are those that column. The rest of those numbers are your actual uh, deviations, and then that last, the highlighted one, is the average of your actual deviations. Okay. All right. Oh, and then we'll do our last one. Um, one minus, right, in parentheses. Yeah. So you want to copy it exactly the way you see it up here. Plus in parentheses, okay. one minus point one. Plus parentheses. Yep. One minus point one, the beta that I gave you, point one. In parentheses, times. The previous trend, so that is your pre, so that would be Q2. Okay, now let's hold up for a second. Because I see, so you did correct here, you did the, F, the current F97, that's P3, minus read up there, so that first part, that 0.9, or 0.1 times that F right here, and then that should be actually P2, because it's the same column, it's still the same forecasting column, but it's just the previous. So instead of Q2 here, it should be P2. 
But it's the same F, but it's just different time periods. And then press enter there. Yeah, just press enter. Okay, okay very good. And this equals F plus T. Equals F plus T. Enter. Okay, highlight those three. Uh, no, the three that you had in that next row here, from the 97 to the 97, yeah, right there. And then drag that down to so right there. This should be the previous fit. So that's why it's not updated. This should be R. So this is our previous fit. So if you look in the middle column, previous fit plus 0.3, good, times A. A is the actual value, the previous actual value. So this will be, instead of this, that actual previous value was here, minus our previous event. Thank you so much. Right? You see where the R2, the R2 is my previous fit, and the D2 is my A, T minus 1. So that's going to give us our update. Did Casey leave too? He had to. Have to. What? Something urgent. An emergency. Okay. All right. So we'll do. We can do another practice. One of these. Um, the last one that we want to cover. The last forecasting, and we're done. Is going to be forecasting. Forecasting with regression. Now. It is. Now, since you guys had regression, two chapters where you spent a good amount of time talking, digesting regression, this is going to be the easiest regression you've ever seen in your entire life. Okay? So, the general idea behind regression, using regression analysis to do it, is we are going to have a simple, simple formula that is, I know you guys kind of hate this already, but our y equals B0 plus B1, what am I going to write next? Okay. Or period. Okay. Our independent variable is going to simply be the time. Right? It's simply going to be this time period. Alright. So what we're going to be doing first in order to do this is we're going to have to put a time element to each one of them. All right. To do this, I'm going to start off, this is going to be our first period. Our time is 1. Okay? Is it always going to be 1? Yep, we're always starting at 1. And we're always just going to be equal that previous one plus 1. 2. And guess what? When I drag that down, it's just going to be counting up. It's simply just counting up. The previous one plus two? No. This one is the previous one plus one. So when you drag it down, it's just going to go one plus one plus one plus one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's just an easy way to get that count. Okay, good. Oh, but you don't need the third. Yep. All right. Very good. This, ladies and gentlemen, is our independent variable. The actual sales, this is our dependent variable. We're just looking and trying to fit our intercept and slope in order to find the regression trend line. All right. So how do I do regressions? Data. Data analysis, right? Regression. Same type thing. Regression, okay. What is my Y? My Y is my sales. My dependent variable is my sales. What is my independent variable? 
is my that time <coughs> labels in first row where do I want to put it? I'm just going to put it right here do something So the key Can things are regular regression. Just regular regression, where you have sales be your dependent, and that number one through twelve. All right. So analysis regression. D one to D thirteen. That's correct. Okay. This should be T one to T thirteen. If you had it correct. T13, okay, good. Labels, output range, okay, click, click on that. And then, oh, I know why, because it's getting lost. It, it's actually getting lost. You actually did it right. But just, yeah, do that. It got lost in your um, skip B3, 3, D, and S, yeah? It just got lost, and that's correct. All right. Now we have everything that we need. We don't need to do any other analysis. All we need to do is look at our coefficients. So our forecast based on regression analysis is y equals b0 plus b1 times time. Our forecast is equal to 115.55. Where did I get that? My intercept plus 2.72 times the time period. Right. So if I want, so what will be my forecast for the, I'm just going to put period. I can now put in any period I want. What is my forecast for the 13th period, right, that we've been doing? Hold on. Hold on. Sure. Yep. Okay. D1 to D13, that's correct. And then we can do that. And then um, Q. It's going to be Q. Yep. Wow. Because that's why you create the 1 through 12, not, not 13, because 13 is your. Yes. Yep. Okay. And then, okay, click yeah. back here. And then put it where you want it to. Okay. The time period. Yep. So if we want our 13th period, because that's what we've been doing. We have 12 data points, we are doing our 13th. Let's do equals to the intercept. And please uh, anchor it so we can do a few other quick examples. Anchor it plus the slope, the 2.72. Please anchor that. F4 times. I'm going to put, click on my period, 13. My forecast is going to be 150 right? for the 13th period. If I want to do the 14th period, my projection for the 14th period would be 153. My projection for the 24th period would be 180. Right? And so it just you can put in any period for time and it gives you what your forecast would be. Now this assumes that you have a linear trend. So oftentimes it could be very wrong and get very wrong very, very quickly. But it's another, because if it's a straight line, regression is just saying a straight line with this intercept and that slope. But if your data kind of follows a curvy line, see how wrong it's going to get over time? So it has a down, downside there. Um, but you can put in any prediction that you want here.
Now, I'm going to do just this last thing. If I want to calculate the MAD for this, okay, so I can compare it to everything, what I would do is next to where I put the 1 through 12, I inserted a couple of columns just so I can calculate my MAD. So here is going to be my actual forecast based on this. So my forecast is going to be equal to, just kind of like what we did before, the intercept 115.54 anchor plus my slope anchor times my value there. Then I can copy and paste it and get my math. Times the Q1. Okay. There you go. Um, 118, okay, I can copy that down because I anchored it and then I can get my mat equals the absolute value of what actually happened minus what my forecast was. I was off by 21 in the first period. Copy and paste that down. Get my equals average, and I'll come around and help out. My MAD is 13.7599. Oh, man. Is that? Okay, so forecast it. Okay, so equals. The intercept, 115, kind of like what you did over there. Um, and then anchor it. Just, uh, no, no, anchor it first. Uh, F4, right here. Just look at it. Plus the slope. And then anchor it times that period, so one. Enter. Yep. And then copy and paste that for your 12. Good. And then over here, calculate your mag. So that equals that same thing. E uh, one up one more because you can start at the beginning. Yep. Equals ABS. Yep. The actual. So that would be I think it's like D or something. Equals yep the ninety seven minus what you just calculated that forecast at one eighteen. So yep. So Copy that down for the twelve and take the average. Yeah. You got you good. You good. So it's D2 minus that forecast, right? Yep, yep, they minus D2 R2. Because right. you're not taking the absolute value. Maybe yes. Yes. Oh. Always with the mad, mean absolute. Remember the A absolute value, or is what you had? Your negatives and positives are canceling each other out. All right. Now we can go back, so our mad here, 13.75, this again, let me, if, if I ever ask you anything, why is this technique maybe not a good technique in the long run? Because it requires a linear trend. If it's anything but a linear trend, this thing is going to get very bad very quickly. All the other approaches to moving average and exponential smoothing, allows it to change and adapt. This does not, right? So I would say this is the worst unless you are sure there's a linear trend. If there's a linear trend, then you can use it, but only if there is a linear trend, right? That it goes in, this, in one direction. It can go up or down or shallow or steep as long as it keeps being consistent. But this, these two methods are adaptable. So MAD for this data, 13.75, 16.5, what was our best one? Our best one for this example was the weighted moving average. Because now we can compare MADs for all of them and choose the best one. All right, well, I'm done. <laughs> so did I give you enough information for seven weeks? All right, very good. Did you guys learn anything about Excel in the last seven weeks? No, this is the seventh week. No, this is the seventh week because today technically is our last day of the semester. 